Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, it is Wednesday. It is life impact time. And we are excited right now to be coming to your phone, your tablet, your computer. You might be fancy and you watching it on your home TV with smart TVs and all that stuff. But we're excited that you have decided to come and join us here in our life impact session at the New Bethel Church. Everybody can make some noise. If you don't want to make no noise, you can do that. As you can see, we got a we got a whole bunch of people on here. It's actually just two families, but it's a lot of us all together. I'm about ten of us on here. It's ten. Yeah. We are starting an awesome, awesome lesson on tonight. Uh, the the title of this lesson we're going to be doing it for a whole uh, little at least about seven weeks. It's a seven-week session titled GEM, G-E-M, Generational Evangelism Mission. I want to introduce everybody so that we can jump right into this on today. Some of these faces are familiar to you, but some of them you, yeah, you may not have seen in a while, but we're excited that we're all in here together. Amen? Amen. All right. All right. So I'm Pastor LaShawn Rutherford. This is my wife, uh, Minister Misa Relaford, Lady Misa Relaford. Misa, hey, that's my wife. Hello. And this is our family. This little young one in the middle is our baby boy, Destin Relaford. Uh, up over him is our baby girl. She's about to turn 10 in a couple of weeks. That's Amaya Elise Relaford. And then with the poofy hair back here is my eldest son, Ricky Relaford. Rick Jackson Relaford. What's up, sir? What's up? <laughs> We're the Rutherford family, and also we got a. We, this is this is real special because we got the Mickens family on here with us today. Hallelujah! Bless the Lord, Lord. Deacon, Deacon, Tony, yes, Anthony, Senior, Anthony Senior. We want you to introduce your family tonight. Can you do that for us? Amen. Praise the Lord. Glad to be here. Glad to be among you all. Well, to my to my left here is my wife Maxine, and to to the right of your screen, if it's like our screen, is our son Marcus, our oldest son Marcus. Actually, our daughter Angela below on the right is uh, older than Marcus. She's the oldest living sibling uh, child, and uh, we did have one that's missing that was still born would have been older than Angela. So it would be Antoinette, Angela, I mean Antoinette, Angela, Marcus, and then the youngest over here on the left, the bottom, that's Anthony. <laughs> Anthony Marcellus Nickens. So, so that's Anthony, baby boy. He's the baby of them all. That's it. That's him. <laughs> well, <laughs> we want y'all to say something to us. We want you to say something. Uh, uh, let's come on, Sister Maxine. Say something to us tonight. Greet the people. Praise the Lord, saints of God. It's just a blessing to be here. I'll, I just feel honored to be chosen to do this. And uh, I just hope I can be a blessing to uh, some of the families that are going to be watching in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Marcus, yeah. Marcus, where are you at, Marcus? You're going to have to tell us where you are because everybody don't know where you are. Yeah, uh, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, yeah, like my dad said, I'm Marcus. I'm the oldest son. I'm here in uh, in St. Louis, actually. Uh, been here since I was in college. Uh, so yeah, just just excited to get to talk with you guys tonight, and uh, looking forward to you know, like my mom said, blessing some families here tonight. Amen. Great. Um, that's awesome. So you're still in the show me state. Yeah, I'm still on the show. I'm still, you know, we three and a half hours away, so we still here. Oh, you're not that far. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. right. All right, Angela, say something to the people. Hello, everybody. I'm Angela Nickens, daughter of you know who. And uh, I'm just excited about tonight. I'm honored to be here, and I just cannot wait to share what we have to share. All right, all right. And man, 
Oh, y'all forgive him. He got his headset on, so he might blurt out here and there. It he might be. What he got to do? Well, we understand. Uh, at any given moment. <laughs> kids will be kids. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. To the people. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm the youngest son, Anthony Nickens. Um, I'm here in Los Angeles, California. Uh, so we're kind of all spread out, but thank God we were all able to get on the on the call, and uh, we're all excited, very excited to share with you guys tonight. So I hope we're a blessing. Yeah. All right, and, and Rutherford children, can y'all say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! <laughs> praise the Lord! I'm excited to be on the session tonight, too. Well, again, we're starting off this wonderful session Um this session today is specific, but it's a part of the whole, the gym uh, series for our life impact session. And I just want to start out with our opening scripture, Psalms 145 and 4 in the King James Version. This is the basis of the entire seven-week session. It says, one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. Ah, the great psalmist is telling us, and I and I love it because that's what we're going to be talking about, kicking it off tonight, is absolutely how generations are passing this great gospel on down the line to other generations right now. Now, I'm, I'm Generation X. Uh, Deacon Nickens, Sister Maxine, are y'all baby boomers or are y'all at the top of the X generation? <laughs> No, I think we're right we're there in the boomers. baby boomer, right at the edge of the baby boomers. Yes. Oh, y'all at the bottom edge of the baby boomers. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Okay. And y'all children, is Marcus, are you X or are you millennial? Yeah, we're, we'd be considered millennials. All the millennials. So I got to identify with the X. Yeah, we're, we all millennials. We was all 87, 88, 90. We was all in there, so... Angela throwing up gang signs on us up in here. <laughs> if I knew G, what's G in sign language? No, we're X. We're X. I was making an M, but in sign language, this is an M. That's oh. I mean. I threw up R. I threw up R. We Generation X. We got millennials, and my children are right after the millennials. So, well, I don't know, Destin, is y'all all in the same generation, but you all are the Z generation. Yeah, Z. That's what I'm going to do after Z is done. What, what's after that? You double the alphabet. alphabet. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> well, so we have a lot of generations, as you all can see, uh, represented here today. And what our session is, this is called Gems Around the Table. So since we're all in different locations, we couldn't gather around one table, but I'm so glad technology allows us to be in California, St. Louis, Kansas City, Pleasant Hill. We're all in several different locations, but we're still around the table. And we want to talk about the importance of passing on this gospel to the next generation. Uh, What Bishop Brady has given us for the rest of the year is a push on evangelism. So we're talking about evangelism. And for me, the first people you should be evangelizing if you have a family is your family. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you have children, you should be evangelizing your children and making disciples out of your children. Uh, if you can't if you can't evangelize or tell your children about Jesus, then how are you gonna tell somebody else about Jesus? My God. So we we in our family we're just getting started. My oldest is eleven and my youngest is four. But you all have already gone through this. You all have been through this, done that, and we want to talk about how you guys uh, included your children in the gospel, in church, in teaching them. And we want to pull some nuggets out of you that we can probably institute with our children, but we want to share with you how we share the gospel as well, because it's all about the gospel. It's Mm -hmm. all about sharing the gospel. And I'm glad that you guys have already done that. Now your children are all grown. 
and going. Our basis scripture for this session is going to be found in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter number six, verses one through 14. I want to concentrate on one verse right now, just one verse. Verse number seven says, you shall teach them diligently to your children. This is talking about the law and the commandments of the Lord and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. I know I said one scripture, but we're going to read two. Verse number 82. <laughs> you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. What's being talked about here is how we are supposed to pass this gospel down the line. Now, the gospel hasn't come to play yet in Deuteronomy, but what happened because they didn't have they didn't have Bibles and the Bible wasn't wasn't back then yet. They passed down this thing through storytelling. They told of the stories. They told of how. And if you read this this uh, chapter Deuteronomy six, you'll find out that they were telling their children about how God delivered them out of Egypt and brought them out and how there was the Passover and the plagues. The Lord is saying, tell this to your children and keep passing it on. They've passed it on so successfully that we're still talking about it today. So I want to know, let's start with Misa. When you first read this scripture, what stuck out to you first? Well, I love all that it entailed. And it just um, really went into alignment about the things, anytime I reflect on passing something down, I always have to go back to my mom. But the thing that stood out to me was that latter latter scripture that you read in number eight, where it says to bind them as a sign on your, your hand and let them be a symbol on your forehead. And I was like, wow, because it's kind of, it's like the mark of the beast, oh, you no. know, <laughs> and it, it it's like God is saying, I want you to be identified and connected to me and your children to be identified and for for people to know of me in in a sense, just as much as the mark of the beast is going to stand out to people. So that was kind of like, that really stood out to me uh, for sure. Absolutely. All right. Begin. When you read the scripture, what first came to mind? You should teach them diligently to your sons. Would have knew it. The NAS. Uh, I, I, I was thinking about when, when Maxine was pregnant with our first child, first rodeo, as they would say, having a child, and um, we would uh, we we had read books and some studying about it, and we would actually like pray and speak, read to our to our daughter that was you know in in the womb and we would uh we would talk and you know speak to her even then and um i'm trying to remember i think we did with the, with the rest of our children as well but that was our first so it was really fresh in my mind how we we talked to her and that did because little did we know when she was born she you know before she was born she had already passed but it was good that we had we had shared God even with her as you know to the to the degree that she could receive it. You know, they talked about the child being able to recognize the parents' voices and uh just preparing to bring her into the to the world. And then when our children came along, oh we thank God we had ample time to uh to share with them and to talk to them about the word of the Lord and, you know, about our parents, how we were taught and, and how they set us down. Uh, I remember how my dad and my mother worked together. Mother always cooking beautiful, wonderful meals. And my dad, I remember this certain couch that we had, that he, all of us at the time, at the time I'm thinking it was only like five of us. We, we had a total of nine sip, uh, it was nine. I had eight siblings, you know, along with my dad and mother. 
And uh, we all was like five, I think it was five of us at the time when when I remember our dad uh, sitting us on the couch and just reading to us the word of God and teaching us. And that's how we were introduced to the things of God. And so we would many times uh, with our children, uh, um, <clears throat> I'm trying not to make it too long here, but yeah. there was a lot of different ways we did it. Um, you know, dinner time at the table, uh, especially during like Christmas, we definitely would sit down and traditionally, even now we still uh, get around and talk about what the true meaning of Christmas is. And, um, oh, wow. And, let, me know, incorporate let, me the let me ask you this. <clears throat> Excuse Between me. the two of you, who was the most... Um, ah, I see how to word this. Who taught the most in the home as far <laughs> as scriptures are concerned? Was it Sister Maxine or was it you? I uh, think it was I think it was more effectively Sister Maxine because she was she had a great gift of putting the word into song and the children just really got into that. You know, she was <laughs> We'll read her scripture and then she will make a song out of it. And boy, they they carried that on. And uh, you know, oh, we would um uh, TV is a big thing. So we would, you know, we found Bible uh Bible stories and things on television and we kind of fell in love with the the series uh Super Book. I don't know if you all heard of that one, Superbook. but Superbook is it's it's still out there. Okay. Yeah, it's still out there. Yes, and yes, I, we, we still got to I saw a um a video in my vehicle when he lived here it was a uh, Veggie Tales, <laughs> and I think he recognized. <laughs> yeah. he must have been at our house yeah. video recording something, and and Anthony was like, "Oh, I know that Veggie oh, Tale." Yeah. <laughs> but like I don't yeah. remember. I remember you recognizing that details. But Marcus, I think you're doing your hands like this. What does that mean? What is that? <laughs> I would definitely say uh it was it was a really good balance. Um, you know, for my dad, you know, we we had the times when we get home from school, right? So you you couldn't turn the TV on. You had to make sure that you sat down. I remember he had us read the Bible all the way through for a year. And I remember that we, we had to read like three chapters of the Bible every single day that we came home from school. And I remember kind of cheating a little bit, but you know, there was there was a lot, a lot that I learned in that. You know, I, I got a lot out of those times. Um and and so my dad definitely taught us the word of God um, you know, pretty much our entire lives while we were growing up. And then, you know, as as he was saying, my mom definitely did a great job with, you know, us, <laughs> you know, we would learn it in song, right? Like she would, she would just make up a little like Bible rap or Bible song and, and we would sing it. And it, it's still, you know, some things I can still remember till this day. Um, Go ye into all the world and teach the gospel to every creature. <laughs> yeah, but that was a hit. That was a hit back in the day. That was the top 10 for sure. <laughs> But yeah, it was definitely a vibe. Definitely. You know the song Angela sing it. My my voice is acting up. It's act I'm real. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? All the world. You got the mic. How does it go? To every creature. Go ye. This was mama. And to all the world. And teach the gospel. To every creature. I'm oh, sorry, my voice is gone, but and that's how it was. Shout out to Mama. Marcus, do you teach yeah. that to your children? Do, you, do your children know that song? Uh, they they know some other ones. I haven't taught them that one yet. We we're gonna get to that one though. That's it's a great, one. it's a <laughs> classic <know>. for sure. <laughs> well, that was what uh, Deacon Niggas was saying that he, you know, he got it from his parents, and so now you know, some of those things we implement. And that's exactly uh, the scenario for myself. Um, mm -hmm. I think that kids learn best through um, music and, and rhythm and rhyme. And yeah. so that's how I get them to read the script, to learn the scripture and hide it in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, Ricky and Amaya, yes. between mommy and daddy, who does the most teaching 
as far as the, the scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy. Yes. They <laughs> beat that was cool too. Thank you. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> oh, why, why do you say mommy? Well, um, most of the time when we have to get our reading in, she tells us to get the Bible, and then she has us read it, and then if she doesn't hear it, we have to reread it, and we have to keep reading it until we understand it, and then we write a report about it. She has to make sure that we understand it. That is good. Oh. That is Amani, now you were pointing to me. Now you got to prove why you were pointing to me. Why were you pointing to me? Um, we got preach a lot. Oh. She said because I preach a lot. <laughs> That's what I was oh, thinking. Okay. She's, right. <laughs> She's like, all that you do at the church, I'm going to include all of that. <laughs> but in the home, I think Misa does more teaching mm -hmm. I do and I don't know whether it is a mother's thing or something like that but you know I will teach and sometimes we have devotion here at our house we have devotion we go over scripture and who you don't see in the picture today is granny Misa's mom she's mm -hmm. here, she'll pull her bible out and we'll all sit around the table during dinner time and we'll discuss the scripture we even discuss Deuteronomy 6 at right. one, one of our devotions, uh, yeah. it was one of our devotions that we we learned. So, Anthony, I'm gonna go to you. How important, or well, I don't, I won't say how important. What has that teaching, and I call it evangelizing in the home, because actually your parents made you a disciple first. You know, they discipled you first because they're the ones teaching you the word. At least that's what I'm hearing. So how important has that been in your life? And would you say it has been effective? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it affects every single thing that you do in your life. Um, when, you're, when you have two godly parents, that makes such a big difference in your life. I can't even begin to uh, try to pinpoint the gravity of, how great it's made my life just to have uh, two two Bible believing parents who who put the word inside of us uh, on a practical level. When you guys were talking about how Rick and Amaya and uh, they all have to learn their scriptures and everything on a practical level, I remember in school being very good at English because I understood lofty words that were in the Bible um, a lot sooner than other kids would understand what they were so i was able to put certain things and concepts together a lot easier as a child and it helped me uh in my academics a great deal uh, just like on a basic level like on a, a very basic level me being able to learn the word and then growing up experiencing life experiencing heartache experiencing joy experiencing sadness um having the word in my heart having those scriptures come up those songs like Go You Into All The World, having different things just pop up in my mind when going through different tests and trials in life, it anchored me. Uh, there's a lot of things that me, my brother and sister have been through in our individual lives that could have taken us out. And if we didn't have an anchor, if we didn't have um, that teaching from an early age, we don't know where we would be. We don't know what we would be doing. Uh, we wouldn't be our, we wouldn't be in our right mind. Uh, we might not be here. And trying to pinpoint like like how how great and how magnificent it was to just have the word in our lives at a young age is really hard to do. Just because God is good and He He, he once He plant once our parents planted that seed, it was able to grow over the years with other teaching with other. Uh, preaching with other uh, songs and different things like that. So uh, we feel extremely blessed. Oh wow, Ricky, I'm coming. To, I'm coming to you because he he was in school. He raised his hand. He you see yes, his hand. I saw it. <laughs> I'm coming to you. Uh, but right before I do, Angela, is is it the same for you as Anthony has that? Because you used a good word. You used the word anchor. Uh, 
And we know no matter how the boat moves and when it's sitting on top of the water, the waves come, the winds blow. But you use the word, doesn't mean the boat won't move. It just means it won't move too far from where that anchor is. Mm -hmm. How's that the same thing for you, Angela? Do you have that same testimony of that uh, being an anchor for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's just, it's definitely something that I wish everybody could experience. Um, it, I get sad when I find out that this is not the norm for everybody. Like when I get to know other people, like to me, this was just the norm. You just had two parents. They knew God. They put God into you. You know, they they poured into you all the things from the word and everything. So I, stepping out into the world, we were a little sheltered. So it was like weird when we found out, oh, you don't have a mom into that or you don't, you know what I mean? So we didn't realize how blessed we were until we actually got to like know other people and things like that. So it's just a blessing being able to step out and see like, wow, like we really are blessed and we just do not take for granted. Like the, the parents that got, like I got, I thank God every single day for my parents because it's just, sorry, it's just such a blessing and you really don't realize it until you have really stepped out into the world and gotten to know other people. And I just, I just feel so blessed. So yes, okay. piggyback everything at the same. Thank and you Marcus. for that to yes. our children. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Listen, children, listen. <laughs> Ricky, I know I was coming to you. Ricky, what if you had your hand up? All right, so like back to what you guys were talking about, super looking stuff. Like sometimes, like in children's church, for example, where we watch super and stuff, it helps some kids because some kids are like me and they're like, it's easier for them to learn with a visual, but it's also still good for them to actually read the story, actually read the story first. Oh, yeah. And that's good. I think that's I think that's kind of what Jesus was doing when he was telling the stories in parables. Um, so passing these parables down, even the scriptures that uh, the stories that Jesus taught, passing them down to the next generation. This is all what Deuteronomy is talking about is passing the word down generation to generation. Now, Angela mentioned something that's important to me because when I got in church, my parents, I didn't have parents that were in church. I was the only one in the house. So I was the totally opposite. At the beginning, my mom took us to church. Uh, we went to church every Sunday and then it waned over time. And somehow the Lord put his hand in there and pulled me out. And I, at, at age 13, I started back going to church, got filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, and have been walking with the Lord ever since. But it was the opposite for me. I had to evangelize my siblings and my mother. My mother, I had, whoo, everybody don't have this testimony. September 2017, my mother was here in Kansas City and she got filled with the Holy Ghost at New Bethel Church yeah. at the altar, filled with the Holy Ghost. And then who should forbid these to be baptized in Jesus' name came up. So she got baptized and me that I went all the way back to that 13-year-old little boy who went to church, who came home playing a tambourine, singing church songs and all this stuff. Turn years later, I baptized my mother. In Jesus. 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 That's a great testimony for me because, you know, Angela, you were talking about, you know, how everybody doesn't have that. And I'm one of those. I didn't have that. But yet and still, it can flip. Sometimes it's the children who draw the parents into yeah. church and for into sure. this walk of life. Lisa. Sean, can I say something on that? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to say that's the beautiful thing about the body of Christ mm. is that we are a family. The body of Christ is a family. It doesn't have to look a certain way. Yeah, we were blessed to have two parents in our household. We were blessed to have two believing parents who went to the same church. That's even a thing. You know what I mean? So that was a blessing. But on the other side of things, it does not have to look like this, like for God to save you. It doesn't have to look like this dynamic. That's the outstanding thing about the family of God. God can pick you up and turn you around from wherever you at. 
whatever part of the world you are in, whatever your family dynamic might be, however broken your family might be, he can still use you to impact other people. And it might, it might not end up being your personal family that comes to Christ first. Your mom didn't come around for years, but you would draw other people along the way. And when God finally brought your moms around, you was able to give God praise for that. So I I wanted to get that out there. It's just like, it doesn't have to look a certain way. It's absolutely a blessing that it looks this way for us, but God's going to do whatever he wants to do with whoever it is. So be, be encouraged on that. Woo, you, you trying to turn this Bible class out? Preach this it. Life <laughs> impact. You trying to make an impact on here. Make it. <laughs> really? That's, that's, so, that's so true. That I'm just, uh, I was in my reading and study. I was, I went to Nehemiah, um, uh, Nehemiah 4 and 14 in the NIV version. It says, remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters your wives and your homes. And I'll stop there. But it, it is it's constantly telling when you said being anchored and being rooted, it, it's constantly telling us contend for the faith, spread this good gospel, pass it down, it's legacy, it's life. And so there are so many times where, like you were saying, the dynamics may not always be there. Although I grew up in a two-parent home, my mother, my father knew the Lord, but my mom was the she sent us to church when she couldn't come with us. And so as a young person, I, I just embraced God. And then later on at 17, like totally committed my life to him. And so, like you said, during the most hard times of my life and navigating through life, I could always reflect back on those scriptures and those prayers that mama prayed. And so I feel an uh, obligation to my my children and even those that you know, they call us Abraham and Sarah, those that may not were raised up in the church, but need to be um, influenced and need to be taught about the word of God. So I feel that uh, burden to share the word of God. And if I'm going to do it with the masses, I absolutely have to make sure that I'm planting seeds in my children's lives as well. Amen. So that's awesome. That's awesome because these seeds grow up, you know, uh, uh, Deacon and, and, and Sister Maxine, you all put seeds in your children that have later come up to be trees that produce their own seeds. And it's just uh, it's a domino effect. It just keeps on happening over and over and over. Trees are going to grow up. Now, I wanted to say this because we're talking about evangelism and we're talking about in the different generations. Uh, Sister Maxine, how were you guys evangelized by others? Who, who evangelized y'all? Was it something that they just brought you all to church or did somebody witness to you? Uh, somebody invite you? What was, how did evangelism look back in the, look in the days of the baby? Well, back then when, uh, when I when I was born, my mom and dad had already received the Lord into their lives. So what they tell me is because they got I was born in 1961 and they were saved in 1960, I believe. And my mom and dad, uh, one of the some of the saints lived next door to my mom and dad, and so. They started ministering to my mom and dad, but it it goes back. Sister Relaford was the first one that got saved <laughs> in the family. She was the first one that get, get, to receive the Holy Ghost and receive baptism and everything. She was the first one. I don't know. I can't remember the whole story, but she was the first one. But then my mom and dad, uh, uh, they started, Sister Hubbard <clears throat> was ministering to them. And so that, that they started going, they they went on to church and got hooked, started getting hooked on it. <laughs> and uh, God just started just flowing everybody in, my aunties and uh, all of them, Aunt Louise, Aunt Nanette, you know, all of them were coming in to the, you know, to the body of Christ. And uh, that's how, and then when I, I mean, that's all I knew. <laughs> it was, <laughs> that's all I knew. Because you know, I was born is almost like I was born into you know the uh, the way of Christ. So 
That's what I was uh, telling. So is it more like if so for you it was a, a family thing. Mother, dad, tongue. Yes, it was just a, it was family, family. <laughs> oh, you know, everybody still coming together. The one and uh, the, it was just a blessing. God chose us at that time for such a time as this, and so it just continued to flow. Praise God. It flows, and you know, into our children. It flowed into our children, and uh, then now, my son and my uh, my daughter in love, teaching it to our grandchildren. <laughs> you know, the love of Christ and the importance of knowing Christ. So it, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so, so Marcus, I'm coming over to you again. Um, was it that seed from your parents that stabilized you? Uh, into the church, or how would you say, you know, evangelism has played a part in your life? Now, we've already talked about family uh, being kind of the basis, if you're a family of believers, it being a basis, but, and, and then Sister Maxine just said, you're passing that on to your children, but would you say that was a grounding thing for you, or it didn't happen until further along. Was it something you went to church, you knew about church, you were brought up in church, but at what point did you become the church? Yeah, I'd say for myself, um, you know, growing up, like I think a lot of it was very much so my parents instilling those those principles and those values in me. And I hadn't quite adopted it for myself, I'd say until, you know, I, I went off to college on my own and like that foundation had been laid, those seeds had been planted. And so I was, you know, I was away at school and I knew that like, you know, I knew God was real. You know, there was never really for me a time in my life where I didn't like believe that God was real. But there was a time where, you know, I just had doubts about, you know, who I was to him. And I just remember, um, you know, on my journey, you know, my journey took me to college and I found um, people who evangelized me at the time, um, I, you know, I was somebody who had been in church and was raised in church and knew of uh, knew God and knew scripture and all of those things. Uh, but it was it was something that I needed at that time. And, you know, it it taught me um, a lot of different things, you know, in addition to what, what my parents taught me growing up. It taught me a lot about, um, you know, really going out and seeking and saving the lost. Um, and it, it, it's something that I want to teach, you know, continue to teach to my children. Um, that's, you know, one of the things that we do with our kids is, you know, what I, I learned growing up with my parents is, you know, we have those family devotional nights. We'll, we'll just pull out the Bible and we'll, we'll go over scripture. Um, we'll, we'll talk about different things that's going on in the kids' lives. Um, you know, I, I teach the, the Bible to the, to the girls. I got three daughters, Leon and Breland in Georgia. And, uh, you know, I, I do I do all that I can to try to be like my dad when it comes to that. Like we we read the Bible basically every single night. Uh, we make sure that we pray. You know, we'll sing a song, we'll sing a worship song and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, I, when it comes to that side of it, you know, I, that was all instilled in me as a child. And it's something that I'm like, I, I have to replicate that um, because, you know, there, this world is crazy. You know, there's a lot of different teachings out there. There's a lot of thoughts and beliefs that are going on in the world right now. And, you know, when your kid goes off to college, you want them to have that that anchor, right? You want them to be uh, solid in their foundation and, and know who they are and whose they are. And that that never left me, you know, even though I, you know, it wasn't going to the, the, the New Bethel Church anymore, it was still something that never left me that I needed to have my relationship with God right and that I needed him in my life in order to be successful. And, you know, it it started when I was a child. Um, and I think because of what my parents did, I, I never strayed away from, you know, wanting a relationship with God. And it's because, you know, of their upbringing with me. Wow, that's excellent. That's excellent. <laughs> Angela, I'm coming to you now. You see, I'm making my way around the table. We're going around the table, and I'm coming to my children, too, real quick before uh, one of y'all throw up that five-minute mark or something like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> ah, Anthony said yeah. you got 10 minutes. Angela, real quick, 
for for those that what would you say for those who don't have children? I know you work in the you've worked in the educational arena. You st- aren't you still working in the educational field? Yes. And, uh, you you have a couple of fields that you work into where you uh, interact with people on multiple levels. Uh, mm-hmm. What would you say, and how? What would you tell a child, uh, even in elementary school, of how they can be a representative of Jesus? How can they evangelize? Mm-hmm. Like generational evangelism. How can a child evangelize? Yeah. I mean, honestly, one of the main things that I've noticed even growing up myself is just you living your life and walking different. Like when you walk different, people inquire. People ask about it. I'll give you an example. A prime example when I was in school. Uh, My best friend, Desiree, I remember she was not in church like that. Like she knew about God and stuff. Like she would go to church every night, but she wasn't like in it. And she would be like, Angela, like, I really want to go to church because you, like, and I'm like, what? Like, and I'm just living my life. Like, she knew that, she noticed I didn't cuss. She noticed I wasn't out here, you know, in these streets, doing what people do in these streets. And she was just like, oh, like, you, she's different. It's something different about her. And I remember that. And that stuck with me because I'm like, I, I didn't even think, I'm just being myself. And being myself actually dropped some, drew someone to Christ. And I just think, like, if they, if children know, like, if you just live your life and be who you are consistently all the time, people will be drawn to you. And what must I do to be safe? That's basically what happened with me and my best friend. She was like, okay, so what I got to do? Like, I just come to church with you, whatever. Like, so that's one of the ways that I would, like, someone, a child that is in church. And then, like, children that I work with, like, I hope I don't get fired for saying this. But, like, when we have our snacks, like, I have them bless their food. Like, I've invited them to come to church with me. No one's come yet, but I'm going to keep inviting them. Like, we have a skating party coming up. I'm planning on inviting my entire class and their families. Like, just little things like that. They may not come to church, but they might come to a skating party. They might come to Bethel's Got Talent. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm going to keep sending those invitations and hopefully somebody... Because I teach kindergarten, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. to add to that, one of, when Sean and I were youth pastors at a former church, that's what we did, although, you know, as, as teachers and as administrative people, you can't go in there and you can't preach Jesus. However, peer to peer, you know what I'm saying? We used to tell them, you be the one giving the pressure. Mom, dad, or it's like, I'm getting all this peer pressure. I'm getting this pressure. And it's like, not that you have to push your agenda about Jesus, but like you said, just be embodying Christ and living that life. And they're like, it's something about Angela or it's something about Ricky or Amaya. And that's attractive. And, and so our Bible class group, the teen Bible class grew from like, 10 people to, oh my God, it was football (laughs) and cheerleaders. So absolutely right. Like you said, the skating, the bowling, the, you got to win them on in there, you know, where they're going to come. Hey, and then once they come to church and learn more of Christ, then it, you know, it's like that seed is planted, some water, some plant, you know, some, you know, seed, some water, some growth. So I think that's awesome. Right. That is awesome. We haven't heard from these little ones too much. So I want to get to them really quickly. Amaya, Amaya, you ready? It's past her bedtime. <laughs> She's like, oh, we're recording past my bedtime. Uh, but I want to ask you, how would how do you represent Jesus at school? How do you how do you do that? And, and Ricky, I'm going to ask you the same thing. How do you represent Jesus? And I'm going to tell a story uh, about her because in, in what was that? I don't know. Maybe she was three. She was in three and four years old. She was in daycare. And they told us, they gave us a story. They, one time I came to pick them up and they were crying. One of the teachers was crying and boohooing. And I'm like, what is going on? Because if y'all did something to my daughter, no, um, uh, what is going on? They were like, your daughter every day 
at a particular time in the day, she'll go in the corner, she'll lift up her hands, she'll pray, she'll sing songs. And she was only like three years old. She'll sing songs. And after she has her moment, she comes back and she joins the class. But every day she goes into worship. So that particular teacher had been diagnosed with cancer. And she was going through uh, in her body and then seeing that little girl, as young as she was, go to a corner and worship, did something for her soul when she was going through. So have you know, you never know what people are going through. And Angela said, by you being you, yes. just being you is touching somebody. So Amaya, how do you evangelize at school? I mean, how would you share Jesus at school? She said, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think she's going to just take Angela's advice and just say, you know, I just know how to be me. I just, I don't, I don't know how to necessarily go to a student at my age and just tell them about Jesus, but I, I do know how to just be me. Right? Right, Amaya? You can be you and still represent Jesus. Ricky Balboa, Ricky, how do you share Jesus at your, at, I mean, just, it don't even have to be at school, just with your peers. So, uh oh, y'all covering up his hands. Like, just for example, when you like put something in water and it ripples off, that's sort of what happens. Like, you sh you can share it with one person and then they'll get interested in it and start sharing with other people and it just keeps going. But it's mainly, it really depends on what the problem is. On how I so you share the gospel by talking to other children, even about their problems, what's going on in their life or what happens in that moment? Yes, sir. Oh, well, well, how? I mean, what do you do? Do you tell them the right thing or you just represent? The right thing and what they did wrong and what God wants them to do. And so like. That's awesome. That's awesome. Because, you know, a lot of times I, I would, like I said, I got saved at 13, you know, sharing the gospel was not me just going and saying, hey, you need to know Jesus. But it was me being who I, I was and being it unapologetic, unapologetically uh, being a Christian, being, you know, if my mother and my father or whatever I was learning in church at the time representing that and not being afraid to represent that because everybody else is not afraid to represent who they are. We should not be afraid to represent who we are. And evangelism happens. I'm, Angela, you didn't preach too. All these niggas is preaching up in here. <laughs> you are evangelizing by being you. Yes. The authentic you, the one that loves Jesus, the one, like she said, that doesn't curse or whatever. You ain't got to curse because friends curse. You know, out of my, my graduating class was about 534 seniors. I had one person come from the beginning of the line all the way back to the Relaford section R out of 500 and some people and said, you know, uh, I've watched you this whole, all of our high school years. And by you uh, representing Jesus, I want to be better. I want to be better. And this was a person who uh, grew up in church. They went to church, but at school, they didn't represent church. It was, there was no church there. <laughs> but they were able to come back and say, you know, I, I seen an example. That's evangelism. Evangelism is not always, uh, and you know, Dre's been teaching about it over the last couple of weeks. It is not always in three minutes that we uh, have to go and say, Jesus this, Jesus that. We could do it by just living our life. Closing remarks. We got to go around the table real quick. Deacon, closing remarks on generational evangelism and um, how we are, have that responsibility of sharing the gospel in our generation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, it's, it's uh, you know, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. <laughs> that song. <right? laughs> To every creature, uh, 
go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, which we know is in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and uh, he said, teaching them to observe all that you, that I've commanded you. And uh, that's what we, you know, God's word, it just, it just, uh, it gives us, well, he gives us that, that, um, uh, what is it, the commission. And we just, you know, we, it gives us that compelling to do so, to do what he, you know, we know that, that we know that he, that's what he expects from us. Mm -hmm. So that drives us and Love it you. helps us to ask God to just say one thing is prayer. Ask God to help us to have that wisdom that we need to be able. And, you know, the things, the remarks you all said was wonderful. Even Rick, you know, saying how it depends on the situation, you know, <laughs> that young man has got some wisdom. <laughs> But uh, yeah, to, yeah you know, to be able, and the Bible tells us to, um, you know, conduct ourselves with wisdom toward mm -hmm. outsiders, mm -hmm. making the most of the opportunities. Yeah, letting our speech be with grace, seasoned as though with salt, that we know how to answer every person. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, that's Colossians. Uh, forget it. Um. I forget the exact chapter. Yeah. Well, I forget exactly what I think is in Colossians, but it may be in Ephesians too. But anyway, I'm not in there. Um, so it God's word is just you know I just that that's what compels me. What I do, um, what I've done in the past is when I get a chance. It seems like I don't get a lot of chance one on one at work, but when we have. <laughs> In the past, we had like retirement parties, and um, it seemed like that's my time. <laughs> that's my time to bring forth the word because they asked me to pray. You know, they asked me to pray and open up and sometimes be the master of ceremonies for the retirement party. And I'm like, well, hey, we here. You know, we we off, we're not doing work right now. We we're celebrating a person leaving, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that word in there. <laughs> so I would take that opportunity and uh, just tell everybody, you know, um, one of these days we're all going to retire. <laughs> and, you know, it's not just from work, but it's going to be from this earth, from life on earth as we know it. And at that time, we need to really know Jesus Christ. Yes. He's the only, you know, he's the only um, way that we can be saved. And, you know, I just say something like, if you want to know more about that, I'll be willing, I'm, I'm more than willing to share with you after this session. But I'm telling you, uh, this this is kind of like this person, the person that's retiring is going, and this might be my last chance to say something to him. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel, I just feel. Um, Amen. And uh, I know uh, Deacon Nickens, he probably, uh, you you speak for all of, of the children and everybody, all of us, that that's what we all should be doing is taking, not missing those moments to share the gospel or share an experience or share how God brought us through. Uh, and I know we've, we've reached our time limit for today and we got to get off of here. Uh, but before we do anything else, Marcus, any, any last comment, Anthony, Angela, any last comment that you might have? Yeah. Uh, just kind of going back to the original scripture that you brought, I was reading the NIV version of uh, Deuteronomy six and seven and the NIV starts off in verse seven. It says, impress them on your children. Um, talking about the ways of God, impress them on your children. And when you make an impression, whatever whatever is making the impression, impression is now on the object that it was uh, set on. So if I put my fingerprint on the table and I pick it up, since my hand was there, you can now tell that my fingerprint was there. So that mm. it, it's, a, it's the object of identity. Uh, if you are walking Christ, if you're walking the lifestyle of Christ out, if you're doing what you need to be doing before the Lord, you can make, you can be a good witness and you can make that impression on your children. Uh, they brought it home to us. They wasn't just out there saying uh, one thing and doing another at home. They made the impression that they were going to be the same people 
in the world that they were at home. And that's what affected us the most is that they took that seriously. Uh, and that was the impression that they left upon us. And so since they made that impression on us, we now have that responsibility to make it to the next generation, our peers even. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just wanted to say when when we see it walked out, when you, when we see like uh, the, the talk is backed up by the walk, that's what makes the real impression. Uh, and so that's what I'm grateful for. And that's what I endeavor to do myself. So I, I, the word of God, it says when the word becomes flesh, you know, making the word of God become flesh, that's the embodying, like they're walking it out. And I would just, if I can, um, just encourage every mother, every father, every brother, sister, whoever you may be Mm -hmm. to don't just don't become discouraged in speaking and sharing the word of God. I know the enemy will try to come in and be like, oh God, I don't want to run them away from the Lord, but it's our duty and the word of God backs us up. It, it says to repeat it, repeat it over and over to them. Make sure you speak it in the morning. When you get up, when you lay down at night, speak it into them. And I love what you said, Minister Anthony, about leaving that imprint. It's like, you know, we don't realize everything we touch, we're leaving an impression or an imprint upon it, but we're absolutely making an impact. And so our first job in ministry for me and for you guys as mothers and fathers, we have to leave an imprint because if we don't, the world sure will swallow them up and, and they'll keep them, you know, longer than they want to be kept. So be encouraged. Don't get uh, disheartened and, and get sidetracked, but keep on. Let's keep pumping hope, come pump the faith into them, pump the word of God into it, fill them up. So when they go out and when they go away to college, like brother Marcus and, and sister Angela, they're on their own. They will, you will feel confident and feel good that I laid the foundation in their anchor. And so Lord, I trust you. And I believe that if they go away, they will be rooted and anchored in you. So I love that. I love just being able to share the word of God. Amen. Angela and Marcus, anything last to say? My children are getting Fancy. No. Mine is real quick, real quick. Just live out loud for Christ. That's all I got. They said everything else. Live out loud for Christ. Live out loud for Christ. Yes. Marcus. Yeah, real quick. Um, yeah, first Corinthians chapter nine. Um, it talks about, you know, Paul talks about being all things to all people. Um, so that's so that, you know, by all possible means, some can be saved. And you never know what impact that you're having on someone. Um, but, you know, your your light in whatever situation you're in, you can always be a light. And so when you're in that light, just make sure that you're meeting people where they're at. Um, and you'll you'll have that opportunity to be able to like share. Like Angela was saying, like a few of us were saying here tonight, you'll have that opportunity to to share the gospel because they'll they'll be wondering, hey, what's going on with this person? And that's your opportunity to share God. Amen. Well, we're going to close out here. We're going to close out. And uh, Destin, you haven't said anything this whole session except for you wanted some noodles. <laughs> That's my baby. <laughs> You're like, I want some noodles. Wait a minute. Before you put it back on, can you tell everybody to be blessed? Say, be blessed right here. Say, be blessed. <laughs> I hope y'all heard him. Ricky, final word, and let's get out of here. Thank you for joining us on Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Everybody have a, a, a wonderful, blessed day. We thank you for joining us. I hope you were blessed by something someone said. If anything, leave an imprint. Leave an imprint. That's it. That's it. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen.